Spiritual discipline is defined, okay? Uh, this is not like discipline your child or you being child d- d- disciplined by the Lord. This is not that kind of discipline. It's not like God puts you in a corner or nowadays, I guess he would put you on your naughty spot. Have you heard about the naughty spot? Uh, they actually sell round rugs or round pieces of vinyl that you can put on the floor that you don't tell your kid to go stand in the corner like I grew up with. You go tell them to stand, uh, just sit in their naughty spot. I'll take morning from 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 5 through 7. Before I read this, I want to say two things. First of all, I know and believe that I am saved. (laughs) Yes, God. (laughs) I am saved by faith alone in Christ alone. Second, but he told us last week that if you ever stop learning, you stop growing. If you stop growing, you stop living. If you stop living, you start dying. It turns out that's biblical. And that is in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. To virtue, knowledge. To knowledge, self-control. To self-control, perseverance. To perseverance, godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. Amen. 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 So we're going to sing, Come Thou Fount, and Farrell's got the solo. Let's stand while we sing. Every place to my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing. Call for songs of my heart's praise. Make me so my song sung by clay.
that you will pour out your living waters, your Holy Spirit in this place, in our hearts. And may we grow closer to you today. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. And thank you, Farrell. Uh, was, guys, I have a question for you. Am I the only one that noticed how beautiful the ladies sang on that chorus? Or that little... Mercy, I turned around, it, it was just like angels singing. That, that, that wasn't a joke. <laughs> but um, it, it, it was, it was a, a blessing to turn around and hear. Um, okay, I'm going to start a new series today, and it's either going to be one, this is going to be a good one, or it's going to be one of those you're going to go, oh no, not, no more, not more of it. So I'm not sure what to do. So let me just ask you, you've already figured out the thing, the figure up the, the theme even from last week, talking about us growing as a church uh, and, um, and growing not just, and we're not talking, and please hear me on this, I'm not talking about numbers, although I would love to have this room 80, 85% full every single week. But um, uh, just in growth in general, let me ask you this question. How do believers grow? You heard me talking about the kids. What do you want to be when you grow up? But we as believers, how, what are some of the elements to, that, we, that helps us grow in Christ? Staying in the Word. In the word. Prayer. Prayer. Fellowship. Y'all, wait a minute. Y'all doing good. I'll just check these off. Okay. Now that don't mean I'm not going to preach the point now, don't Okay, prayer, fellowship, ministry to others. others. That is on my list. Learn and teach. teach. I like that. Pass it on. Uh, We could almost call that mentor and be a mentor, be a mentor, and be under a mentor. Worship. Worship said the minister of worship. That is exactly right, and it's on my list. And it's bold. <laughs> Are you looking at the cheat sheet? Oh, okay, well, read the one right before it, since that's your personal favorite. <laughs> Fasting, I wasn't expecting to get that, but since he's cheating, we'll let him use it. Uh, all right, uh, any, any, how else do we grow to be like more as a believer, be more like him? Obedience. Obedience. You got to obey. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Discipline. 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 Oh, have you got a cheat sheet? Nope. <laughs> well, I just want to know how good our student minister is over there. So uh, let me just tell you why we're going to be talking about this, this for, the, for the next few weeks, okay? Spiritual disciplines. I, I know, he, he may have cheated. But anyway, that's what we're going to be talking about. And what we're going to be talking about in light of spiritual disciplines, we're going to be talking about the path to growth. Because if you are going to be growing as a Christian, if you could be on that path, I promise you, Spiritual disciplines is going to be a part of it whether you know it is or not. And if you know it is and you are practicing spiritual discipline on purpose, you will grow on purpose. And that's a big deal. Discipline and disciple are closely attuned. We mostly consider disciple to be a learner, and that is true. But when we look at it, any disciple... To be a true learner is going to have to be disciplined in their approach to everything they do, right? I mean, this is not this is not rocket sandwich science. This is not rocket science. Um, uh, uh, Pharaoh read, and I appreciate the introduction uh, to it, but that in in Second Peter, but all also for this very reason, giving all diligence. Add to your faith, and he just goes on to your virtue and knowledge and self-control. And self-control is a big deal about, about uh, a discipline. So we are going to be going through this and figuring this up and out, and we're going to talk about, okay, so how do we grow up? 
That, that's what, you know, just like the kids, they're not sitting there going, sitting there, I'm trying to grow up. They just are. Well, by the time you get grown up, quotes, you don't just naturally grow. You have to work on it. And that's why we go. Spiritual discipline is a path to growth. So let's just look at the very first point I'm going to look at is spiritual disciplines define. And we're just going to, this is the introduction, and then we're going to get to the table, and I'll show you how we're going to do that. Spiritual disciplines define, okay. Uh, this is not like disciplining your child or you being child d- d- disciplined by the Lord. This is not that kind of discipline. It's not like God puts you in a corner or nowadays, I guess he would put you on your naughty spot. Have you heard about the naughty spot? Uh, they actually sell round rugs or round pieces of vinyl that you can put on the floor that you don't tell your kid to go stand in the corner like I grew up with. You go tell them to stand, uh, just sit in their naughty spot. I'll take three. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Well, God is not doing that. When it comes to spiritual discipline, He has no spots for you. Okay, there's no 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 little round spot for you. Uh, it's not a round mat. There's no corner. You don't practice spiritual disciplines to stay out of trouble. You practice spiritual disciplines to grow. Spiritual discipline is a... De- oh, I'm going to put this up here. This is important. Spiritual discipline is developing and practicing habits that grow you closer to God himself. That is a great statement. You need to think about that one. Spirit, this is exactly what it is. Now, there's all kinds of different things, and we named some of them very particularly as we went through that. Fellowship is not uniquely on the discipline, um, on the discipline list, but it does help us grow. It really does. And uh, if you're coming to church on a regular basis and attending church, and you're going to be uh, fellowshipping, then that's just a part of it. But spiritual discipline is developing and practicing habits habits to grow you closer to God himself. Now we're, now we're sitting there, okay, now we're sort of going to med- meddling. You, you go talk, you go give me homework from God, right? Well, maybe. Yeah, we might do that. But what we're going to do, this bottom line is, do you want to grow in your relationship with God? Okay, I don't think there's anybody in the room that's sitting there going, let me think about that and push the button. No. You, you want to grow or you wouldn't be here. Disciplining yourself to grow with spiritual disciplines is the greatest tool for that. And that's what we're going to look at. And we're going to look at that for the next few weeks. And we're going to look at the different disciplines that you go to. So spiritual disciplines have a, a sense of being different. Okay, spiritual, different, spiritual disciplines difference. Let me give you some ideas about what spiritual difference. Spiritual disciplines shouldn't. Be a heavy burden that feels impossible. It shouldn't be an unrealistic expectation placed on you. It should be stand. It shouldn't be standards to judge other Christians by. Now, sometimes we get in that. You go, you know, you get somebody going. I spent forty-five minutes of my quiet time today on my knees. You. And you know, and we sort of condemn others for not being as spiritual as you and stuff like that. Uh, it shouldn't be a drive to perfection, expecting to reach it especially. It, it shouldn't be a measure to measure your spirituality, to say how spiritual you are. Spiritual di- disciplines is not, shouldn't be a self-improvement plan. It shouldn't be a self-sufficiency. It shouldn't be self-fulfillment of your potential. It shouldn't be based on your own work and dedication. Now, some of these things are good, but that's not spiritual disciplines. Spiritual disciplines should be practiced alone, and they should be practiced as a church. Spiritual disciplines lead to spiritual maturity. Every single time, that's what they do. That's what they're supposed to do. They will produce a discipline, excuse me, a dependence on God himself. And an 
interdependence, don't miss this, and an interdependence on each other as we come together to encourage each other through the process. Spiritual disciplines should and will produce the fruit of the Spirit in your life. The fruit, all of them, of the Spirit. And should be based on the Holy Spirit working in your life. So when you look at this, okay, now, now this doesn't sound like it's too difficult. I mean, we're not talking about a, a final exam type of fear. But we're just talking about what it should be and what it shouldn't be. So spiritual disciplines and the effect spiritual disciplines have. And let me show you that. And this is how spiritual di di disciplines will cause you to grow, okay? It trains us for a life of faith. And not just placing our faith in Christ for salvation certainly starts there, but also living by faith in Him. Depending on Him when things are not going well. Depending on Him to give you insight in the Word. Depending on Him to use you to heal relationships, including the ones you have friction with. Uh, a spiritual uh, a discipline that has an effect of experiences that grow and, excuse me, that grow and blesses your life. It is a source of blessings in your life and those around you. Because when you come here and you're growing close to the Lord, other people see that growth in you and it blesses them. It will encourage them to grow. So that is part of the effect. This is a, a big one. Going through the spiritual disciplines and practice them grows you to think spiritually. Now let that sink in a minute. Because when we're thinking spiritually, we're looking through the eyes of God. We're thinking how we are to be spiritually sensitive to others how other people's little s spirit is. If, they're, if they are uh, just down, in a bad mood, or angry. But it also teaches you the spiritual things of the fruit of the Spirit, the spiritual gifts, being sensitive, His Holy Spirit, and prompting. So when you're going through the spiritual disciplines, when you're practicing them, it helps you think spiritually. The disciplines also simplify decisions. When you're, making deci when you're making decisions on what to do next and you're looking at your own disciplined life, it helps. For example, so if you're on a diet that you're very serious about linen, losing a few pounds, when you're serious about that, when you come up to the store and you're standing there, the impromptu uh, uh, reactionary candy bar that's right there in front of you next to the cash register, because you're on a diet and you're disciplined on that diet, you make an easy choice. If I'm on a diet, I don't pick up the candy. Well, spiritual discipline, when you're practicing spiritual disciplines, it helps you make spiritual decisions easier because you know where you're going, you know what you're thinking, you want to be healthy spiritually, you, just like you want to eat healthy. Spiritual uh, disciplines also helps in very difficult times. As in doubt, as in temptations, as in persecutions. And we, um, when we think of persecution, we think of guys like Stephen and, you know, and Peter and Paul as they were persecuted through the New Testament. We think about uh, how many Christians have give, take, uh, given their life over the centuries. But... Um, you can lighten that just a little bit and go, you feel at times persecuted at work. And that, that's a churchy term, but basically you feel like people do not respect you. They don't like your opinion. They don't want to know your opinion. If you uh, share anything that is spiritual in your life, they make fun of it. And they make you feel less of a person and disrespected. All of that, probably most of you have had some kind of experience like that at work, regardless of where you work. Spirit, having spiritual disciplines practicing in your life helps you stand 
firm in your own heart so you can stand firm for the Lord in their presence. And that doesn't mean that you get in the big debate or go through a, um, an argument. So for SRB, we connect as a body of believers. And look at this next statement, Thomas. Look at this next statement. Spiritual disciplines grows our relationship with our Heavenly Father and each other. Now, and it's important because when we're here together as a church, when we are listening, when preaching, we're studying, uh, whether it's Sunday school or Wednesday night prayer time or coming to the table, we are together. And when we're practicing these disciplines, and if you would, so much on Sunday mornings and particular Sunday school, studying, it helps us to be together with our relationship with our Heavenly Father, Christ Himself, and our church. Well, let's, uh, let's talk about the, what the spiritual disciplines are. Let's give some examples of the spiritual disciplines. We've already talked about this. In fact, if we can compare what we've already been through, y'all did pretty good with that. And uh, worship is a discipline. It, it, in fact, part of the reason you're here. Now, if you are, I'm going to, well, let me just go ahead. I'm going to say a little bit about this. And then we're, we're going to come to the table. Worship is a discipline. And if you not sure it is, if you think, well, I'm not sure what I do to uh, worship is a discipline, just think about how much you get sidetracked in your mind, where you go to anything from what you got to do tomorrow, about what's going to be for lunch, about how's work going to be next week, to what, what's the kids doing right now, I need three spots when I get home. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you're thinking about, you're thinking about these things. But when you're going to worship and is a discipline, you're focused on the moment, moment by moment, whether it is singing. I'm telling you, two, two different times in, this, in the song service, uh, when the ladies started singing, I just turned around. I'm, and it just was beautiful. It was a, I wasn't singing, but the, the music was blessing me from the ladies. And then when the men got to sing, and I, I got a little bit happy singing about that, is the, the, the old preacher would say. And so you enter into this because you're focused. Now, I, there's other times I was sitting right over there that I had a thought, oh my goodness, I got to make sure I do that. And I, uh, forgive me, I pulled out my, my three by five, wrote something down, put it back down, and then got back focused. So even being in this room this very moment takes, if you would, a spiritual discipline to focus, to worship. We're going to do that when we come to the table. So I count that as a discipline. There's also, we got Bible. We mentioned that, being in the Word. When you talk about the, the discipline of, of the Scripture, we're talking about both reading it to understand in big picture and also studying it. Read, reading large portions to get the flow to study one single verse and how that impacts. Uh, did, did, um, did we mention, yeah, we mentioned prayer. Prayer is a spiritual discipline. Um, and we're going to talk more about this, but the, not just waiting for that impromptu, as I think about it, somebody's got a burden, I'll pray for it right then, but also to have a disciplined prayer life to where you are particularly praying through a path, praying for individuals, some that will be every single day, others will be um, as they have need. And uh, prayer is a discipline. Prayer is also a time that we are directly addressing God. It's a discipline that we have to do. Uh, service ministry, that was one of the ones I was go, uh, didn't expect to hear, Barbara, and you did good on that. Uh, being in ministry ministering to others. Now, I'm not talking about being in ministry like staff and stuff like that. I'm talking about being involved in the ministry of Schomburg Grove, being involved in ministry in other organizations like Valley Rescue, like Mission Columbus, to be in, involved in it on a regular basis. And giving. That one didn't come up. Giving is a discipline. And I'm, I will say more about that uh, later, but the bottom line is... Ooh, I don't know if I'm going to go to meddling this heavy. I'll, maybe I'll mention it now and you'll get mad at me and you'll forget about it when I'm actually doing this one. Uh, 
how disciplined are you in giving? All you got to do is look at your bank statement and see how often you give. Have you given 12 times for 12 months? Every other week? Every week? You miss a week because, oh yeah, I didn't go to church Sunday? You know, you got to be disciplined with your bills or things happen. So you can very easily see how a spiritual discipline, when it comes to worship and giving to the Lord, that is a discipline itself. And we'll say more about that. Uh, fasting is one of the ones. Fa- uh, fasting, I have, fasted, uh, ha- I have practiced fasting in the uh, years gone by. In uh, my latter years, I have not done it as much, but, uh, and particularly about food. But there's other things we choose to do away with. Uh, and, uh, but fasting is one of the disciplines that affects us physically. Another one is solitude. And uh, that is when just when you are quiet and you get alone. That is um, a discipline. Sometimes you just have to force yourself, like on the diet thing. Don't have no snicker bars in the house. You know, so you have to choose to be alone. Or when you are alone, choose to take advantage of it. Uh, for example, Carol was gone, her and the ladies were gone for, uh, to uh, VBS, and I, I chose to uh, the only TV I watched, probably over the day and a half they were gone, was less than an hour, it was news. Other than that, the, the TV was off. And uh, I chose to be alone, even though I had the grand dog with the, at the house. You know, the proof about the grand dog is you got a picture on the phone. So I was keeping Benji's dog, but um, I was alone as much as I could. That's the reason I go to my, my uh, study uh, retreats, is to choose to be alone. And in fact, when I was in January, I, I sp- spent almost two weeks up there, and I didn't watch 40 minutes of TV the whole time I was there. Oh, wait a minute. I did. I did wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, there was the uh, Clemson and... Um, uh, who was the other one? Oh, New Orleans. Uh, LSU playing football. I did spend Monday night watching that. But we choose to be alone, to be solitude. Some of us don't like being alone. It's a discipline. Second Timothy. If you would turn to Second Timothy. Second Timothy 1, uh, 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 first verse. Uh, 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 excuse me, first chapter, seven, uh, verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but the, of the power and love and discipline. Now, what I want you to hear on this is that God has not given us anything to be fearful of, but power and love and discipline. He's given us that. The Amplified Translation of this is very, very good on the latter part about this. The spirit of power and love of, of, and of calm and well-balanced mind and disciplined and, excuse me, and disciplined and self-control. All of this is a part of what he has given us. He wants us to be disciplined. He empowers us with his spirit to have spiritual disciplines. So we come here, and we come to the table, and I thought, okay, combination, and worship is really uh, not the first one that is on anybody's list. And by the way, this particular list, there are, there are many others you can put up there. Uh, in fact, you can find, if you Google it, you'll find a dozen plus. And, uh, and I'm just going to hit four or five of them. But... As, as we're looking at this, I was, okay, worship wouldn't be the one, to be honest with you, the first one I would have done, would have, in fact, the thing about it was the, the study of the Bible, because that's, that's where you start. But the table was before us. The table is a worship experience. Rob, if you would, come on up here. Uh, as we approach the table, and I, th- I think we're all home folks, but I just want you to know, you do not have to be a member of this church you do not have to be a Baptist to partake at the table. We do ask that you have, you are a professing believer and you have acknowledged that. And um, so we, that we call open communion. 
But when we come to the table this morning, I'm going to literally walk you through the passage, and I'm going to walk you through what I want you to do. And the truth is, what, what I'm going to walk you through is essentially what I do. Uh, th- this is not no kind of, you know, power, positive thinking, mumbo jumbo. This is nothing. This is just a guidance. It's just, let's just go through this together and let's do it in a spirit of worship. So while the men are distributing the elements, I'm going to walk you through these. But let's remember just before his crucifixion at the last supper we call it while they were eating Jesus took some bread and after blessing it he broke it and he gave it to his disciples he said take eat this is my body and when he had taken the cup and given thanks he gave it to them he said, drink, drink from it, all of you. For this is the blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. He asked us to do this, to remember this, to remember what he did on the cross. And we are here to remember and to worship. Gentlemen. He took the bread and he broke it. And he gave thanks. Let's worship. Lord Jesus, we are so grateful that you, so many centuries ago before the cross, gave us a simple reminder how you chose to go to the cross. And how you gave your body for us. So we remember. We thank you. And we worship you. Not as a crucified criminal, but as a risen Lord that paid the price for our sins. Gentlemen. As... um, they pass the elements, and the, I would ask that you'd take your little piece of bread. I would like for you to hold it and to focus on that bread. And remember that this is a symbol that Christ gave us of how he gave his body. And though we have prayed it, we have read it, Would you personally give thanks for him for that? Thank him as many ways as you can. Remembering that he gave his body on the cross. And that he did that for you. As you remember him on that cross, remember that he died on that cross for your sins. So what I would encourage you right now, ask the Lord to show you your sins. Ask him. To give you grace to confess them to them. 
give words to your sins. Do not hide them from God. I would ask you to continue to worship, to prepare your heart to remember what he did on the cross. And he gave his body for you. That he loved you so much. He died on the cross for you. And you have this little morsel. That he gave us to remember. Confess as you remember your sins. And remember they were paid for on the cross. That God would remember them no more. Remember. Gentlemen, he said, Take the cup and give thanks, drink from it. For this is the blood of the new covenant that is poured out for you. This was not the old covenant from Abraham. As you hold that cup in your hands. As I've mentioned before, put your finger or your hand up under the cup. And think about how God sees you through his blood. And you're forgiven. Thank him for forgiveness. Worship him for his grace towards you. Praise him for the provision of the cross. Tell him you look forward to being around the throne of constant worship for what he did on the cross. Ask him to fill your life with worship moment by moment, day by day.
Do not wait for the service to be over. Anticipate taking this cup, all of you. And remember that we are not under the old covenant and condemned by the law, but the new covenant of a risen Savior. Remember. Lord, we are so grateful to be in your presence as a corporate body and feel like that we have your undivided attention. Continue, O oh God, to grow us in worship, closer to you, and closer to each other. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done this morning in this place. In just a moment, we will come and sing a hymn of invitation. The altar is open. I'll be glad to pray with you. Let's continue to worship.